What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one wants to break down why we're going to be looking for some interesting volatility as we have the election coming up for next week, not to mention new developments on the charts. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Mumu link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention an 8.1% APY in uninvested cash. The offer ends very soon, in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the broader markets. So as far as the market is going, guys, just know that right now we're seeing an increase in volatility. And this is happening because of the fact that we are um, seeing some new changes, especially as the market is getting ready for this election. So I'll talk more about that in just a second. I would just want to go over some more data. So just know this, guys, we have a very, very crazy week ahead of us. The market did see some upside for today as more buyers have stepped in. Uh, however, uh, despite that, the market did end up starting to slow down towards the end of the day, which is why we saw we saw this like very mixed market. This is because of the fact that there are still lots of sellers that are present and there's uncertainty associated with the election. So for Monday, it's going to be very quiet. We just have some bill auctions and very minor data. But then Tuesday is going to be crazy. We have some very important ISM services data. And then we have the presidential election about four days from now. This is going to be wild. So the reason why it's so wild is because the market is going to be pricing in different things, looking at the policy changes coming from these different candidates and their uh, anticipation. I can't wait to see what that leads to. So I'll talk more about that in just a second. Also, remember, guys, that for Thursday, we have the notorious FOMC meeting and Jerome Powell giving a speech. Then Friday is when we have more Mich Michigan consumer sentiment data. But Tuesday and Thursday are going to be big days for the markets. I would, I would actually say Wednesday, more like Wednesday through Thursday is more significant because the market is going to get the reaction to the election on Wednesday. So just keep that in mind, guys. There's going to be a very, very big reaction. I can't wait to see what that leads to. Um, for other factors out there, we basically have Berkshire Hathaway announcing earnings on Monday alongside Palantir and a few others. For Tuesday, we have minor earnings in the morning. Then we have like Supermicro and a few more. For Wednesday, we have ARM, AMC, and a few others. Thursday, we have DraftKings and a few more, and that's pretty much it for now. There's not really a whole lot else that's going on. With the election, we have the countdown on. It's about three days and nine hours from the time I'm recording this, basically um, four days from now. So we'll see what that leads to. So with that being said, what do I see at least for this moving forward? So as far as NEO goes, we do have a head and shoulders like structure. If we lose the support right over here, we're looking for a dip all the way down towards, I would say this gap flow. So I think NEO is going to dump to the low fours if we lose $5 flat. If we manage to break past 5.38, we're going to be looking for this gap fill back up for about 5.6. That's going to be very important, so we'll see which way we end up going. So give this the time that it ends up needing. Um, the election is so far looking a little bit more bearish approaching it, so we might see a little bit more downside on Monday, so just keep that in mind for NEO. That's why NEO is kind of like forming a head and shoulders, looks kind of weak right now. So there is that risk of downside, and the same thing can be said about the broader markets. For SPY, notice that we look bearish on the daily. We kind of like got this big red bar. Attempted to rebound only to reject. So we're going to likely retest 569 as soon as Monday. And if that fails us and there is more uncertainty about the election, we could be coming all the way down to about 563 to fill that gap. That's also very close to like a, about a 5% move down. So we could be looking for some downside, a lot more downside to fill this gap if that ends up being the case. And we'll see if we get a bounce or not after the election before we continue lower. But I do want to call out that SPY still has this corrective phase that's starting. And we still have a lot of these gaps to fill below. So I do presume there's going to be some downside coming. So the chart looks bearish approaching the election. I anticipate some downside on Monday. And then Tuesday, we'll have to see how things end up going. And then with the election coming out, we'll see, guys. Do we get a huge bounce right after the election? Or do we get a bounce in a rug pull? Or do we just straight up crash? I don't know, guys. I'm honestly not sure about how the election is going to go. It depends on which candidate wins. As you guys know, the different candidates have different policy projections and different policy proposals. So the market's kind of like pricing in one thing and another thing, and it's not sure. And whatever happens is what's going to lead to the big move. And that's what the market's going to be waiting for. So that's what we're waiting for. What, what's going to happen with the election? Who's going to win? What policy projections are going to be, uh, you know, and are going to be like the more probable things? And then what does that lead to? That's what the market's waiting for. For now, I do think we're going to dip a little bit more for 5.69, maybe a little bit lower. If that fails us, we could actually come all the way down to like 5.65 and then 5.63. But 
I don't know for sure, guys. I really don't know if we're going to truly get that big dump or not. Um, you know, it, it all depends on what happens with the election. For other factors, we also have ES, which is looking a little bit more bearish. Um, we have this big gap to fill down here. We're going to be watching to see if 57.50 holds. If it doesn't, we're going to be coming down to about 56.30. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. So remember to keep that in mind. For NVIDIA, we have a lot of gaps to fill down here. So I do anticipate it's going to continue to fall. It's trying to rebound just a bit before it continues to dip lower. So we could see a dip approaching the election. I wouldn't be surprised if we see NVIDIA continue to sink. Um, we could be approaching the lows from yesterday, if not all the way down towards 128. Um, so we'll have to see how that ends up going. Uh, and then with that being said, that's how things are kind of like looking so far. Tesla looks more bearish. Um, we, we've been falling quite a bit. We're barely holding support around 245 around that area. If that does not hold us, our next support is going to be our 20 EMA 242. And if that fails, we do have this big gap to fill, guys. So be careful on Tesla. We could see a dump. Depending on the election, though, you know, maybe the election causes a bounce on Tesla or not. So I wouldn't count on the gap getting filled for sure. It depends on the election. If we start losing 242, though, I do think there's a risk of us coming down to start filling at least half of it. So just be careful, guys. There is, um, excuse me, a risk of downside on Tesla nonetheless. For NQ, we've been dipping a bit. We're trying to rebound, but we're barely holding 20,000 or 50 EMA. If it fails us, we're looking for this big gap to fill down here towards 19,500. On the QQQ, um, we have this resistance to watch for at 495, and we have this gap down here around 474. If we lose 484, we're looking for 474 as our target, so give this the time it needs. And same thing with Apple, we could actually uh, you know, attempt to fill this gap above up here to 225 for a small balance before we continue to start dipping to fill some of these gaps down here. So my view of the market is simple. I think the market's going to dip a little bit more on Monday, but then we're setting ourselves up for a huge move on I would say Tuesday through Wednesday, depending on what the market's thinking about the election. That's something I can't predict. I don't know if the market's going to see a big rally after the election or if we're going to see like a pump and dump or a big rug pull. I don't know, guys. Okay. Um, just to be very, very clear, the market is pricing in. Okay. I'm going to be honest with the bonds market. When you look at the 10 year, right over here it's basically pricing in that the government is going to be issuing a lot more treasuries so when the there's a lot of supply of treasuries when the government starts borrowing more money what happens is as time goes on they're trying to incentivize people to once again buy them and then they're going to be paying higher interest as a result of that and that's why the yields are going up so the yields are going up because the market is pricing in that the government is going to be finding a different way to essentially um, generate revenue, right? The government makes money through taxation and then borrowing money. So in this case, that's why yields are going up because they think that there might be tax cuts coming. I think that's what they're thinking, which which kind of implies they might be thinking that you know the guy on the right is likely going to win. That's what they're thinking. I don't know for sure because if he doesn't win, I think yields might start you know dropping. Because once again, the government's not going to be as incentivized to issue more of these treasuries. And then if it's, if he does end up winning, we're going to be looking for um, these yields to skyrocket up. And then that could have another effect on a bunch of different things. So the problem with that is it's going to be hard for the government to pay that back, which is why they may have to, which is why a recession is like something that the Fed could be thinking. Um, it could be needed. I know it's very hard to say that, but it might be something that's needed by the Fed um, to kind of keep things intact. It's very hard for me to say that. Um, I know it really affects your guys' lives. It affects my life. It's going to affect millions of people, but it's it might become inevitable. Okay, that's the honest reality of this when you look at how these yields are running. So we'll see, guys. Uh, I'm not trying to get way too ahead of myself. I could kind of clarify things a lot more in another video. Um, but I'm just kind of thinking about our economy and what's happening with the bonds market right now. And I am seeing the signals that show that we are entering a very, very dire state. I do want to just be very honest and blunt about that with these high interest rates. So just wish the best for everyone and just know that with the election coming up, it's going to be wild for the markets. The markets are a little bit more bearish right now. And I do anticipate there's a lot of uncertainty about the election, which is part of why we're dipping, not to mention other economic factors such as GDP not being as strong. But 
whether or not we get some kind of a big reaction that's to the upside or the downside depends on the election itself, which I can't predict. So we'll see how things go. Um, we'll see what happens with the bonds market. They are anticipating the guy on the right is going to win, so we'll see. And I'm going to be very, very unbiased when I say that. Uh, they could be wrong. Whatever happens, happens. And we'll see how things end up going. Um, I thank you for listening. Uh, I will try to upload a video tomorrow, if not by Sunday. And um, we'll just have to see how things end up going. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Enjoy the weekend and peace out.